Welcome back to another episode of In the Cutting Room. Today, I'm going to talk about what is a creative strategist, how to hire for a creative strategist, and really, how is this role developing currently? Because I think it's kind of changed over the last few years. So a lot of times in kind of previous episodes, the whole goal of this show is to kind of show the behind the scenes of how do you create great ads. But part of that is the people behind the strategy, the people that actually go out and create the ads themselves. And what I want to talk about today is this role. And it's on the front of my mind. It's, it's top of mind because we're hiring for a creative strategist. And it's definitely something that I know so many brands, when I'm talking to them, they, they need this position or this type of person. And I thought it would be helpful to kind of understand what is this role really, you know, what should their things that they need to be in charge of, but then also how can you find this person? And, you know, what are, what are the things that I'm looking at to kind of spot this talent? See, the hard thing about this role is that it's not like this role is like a degree from the university, right? Like if you go to university and you study marketing, you're not going to get pretty much anything that you need for this role. And so unless you happen to be in kind of direct consumer marketing and already are in the industry itself, you're not really going to find a lot of creative strategists. And unfortunately, even within this industry, there's a greater need than the supply. And I think if we spend the time to teach and grow this position, it's going to unlock a lot for many different brands. And I think that's the hope for this podcast. This is a podcast as a resource to teach and grow creative strategy as a category, as a career, and just my perspective on it. Now, let's talk about the role of the creative strategist, because I think that's a good place to kind of start. This is a dynamic role because I think that they need to have two kind of sides of their brain in use. Most jobs are kind of either all creative or all kind of like data analytics, whereas this role is both creative and analytical. So the first kind of on the creative side, you know, what I see the creative strategist doing is they are really creating the architecture for most of the ad ideas. Now, this is going to look different if you're in an agency or kind of brand side, and I kind of break that down a little bit later uh, in the episode, but just for kind of overall sake of the position, they need to be thinking about the ideas. Like what are interesting ideas? What are new ways to communicate your brand, your products, your offers, whatever it is, right? They need to be coming up with ideas. Now, the, the thing is, is that there has to be uh, an execution of those. And so whether it's them actually going and creating content or getting creators to create that content, so they're writing the briefs, really, it comes down to the creative strategist to have the ideas and then make sure that those are executed. In a lot of ways, it's kind of like you have this idea, but they also kind of have like this sense of like project management in a way too, where they're making sure that their vision is being executed on and it gets to the finish line. Now, they aren't media buyers, right? So the, I don't think that this role is somebody who's running the accounts, but they should understand how Facebook ads work. They should understand how YouTube ads work, how digital ads work in general, right? Like the media buying itself. They don't have to be like understand everything. They don't even really need to have like cost gas, big caps, like all of that craziness and like account structure. They just need to understand kind of how it works holistically. It's the job of the media buyer to educate the creative strategist on what's being optimized in the account so they can better like improve the creative itself, which kind of goes into the analytical part. The analytical part of this position is that we have the abundance of data, right? We get to have a lot of this data, whether it's hook rates, hold rates, click-through rates, all of these things. And it's the creative strategist's job to connect what's happening with the data back to the ideation process. So in previous episodes, kind of in the first few episodes where I talked about our process from ideation to 
production to launching to analyzation of the data and bringing it back into ideation, there is a cycle. And in the middle of all of this is the creative strategist. They are the ones that are supposed to help the brands understand what new ideas should we test out? How are they going to be created? Make sure that when they are created, they look the way that they envision it to be. They get to see it be produced, launched out, and then they actually get the feedback to say, did that work? Did that not work? And then how is that going to go back into creating more content? Now, depending on how big your content production is, there's going to be a lot of times where you know, a creative strategist will not be able to kind of brief out every single exact moment shot, et cetera. Maybe the other creators are doing some of that for them, but it is holistically their job to understand what's working in the account, what's not working in the account and making sure that whoever's producing content, that it's going in the direction that is based on data and is going in uh, a direction that's going to perform well. I think that you know, this role has changed a lot um, because for a long time, we didn't even really need that role. The media buyer was like very, very important and media buyers are still very important. Don't get me wrong. But I think with the rise of creative and the need for so much content production itself, there's been this kind of pocket where it's like, well, the media buyer can't do all of that and the media buying. And so there needed to be somebody who's like in charge of like, getting the content and stuff, but you can't have just like a true project manager because they don't are not on the creative side. They are not creatively thinking there. Somebody still needs to come up with the briefs. So there was just kind of this open chasm of, of a role that has developed. And that is the creative strategist. It's this kind of perfect blend of analytics and creative itself. And so I think from the brand side of things, if the creative strategist is like within the brand, I think they are really in charge of making sure like there's like the what messages and what are the core kind of like selling points or things that they want to be hit that wants to be hit on for each of the ads. So like even if you were working with like influencer outreach agency or creators or any of that other stuff, the creative strategist is the one is that's leading the like, hey, when we reach out to influencers, we want them to say X, Y, and Z because we know that that works, right? So they should have like key kind of architecture of like what works in the account because they're looking at the data constantly and translating that into kind of creative briefs whether those are really fleshed out and specific ideas or just kind of general, we want to be, you know, seeing these things with this product or this offer when we're talking to influencers or creators. The, I would also say that the strategists on the brand side should also be focused on briefing out specific content that they want to see and really trying to find who's going to do that, whether that's going to be internal teams like shoots or they're going to get a studio or an agency or something like that. The creative strategist really should be the one planning all of that and really leading the charge. Even if they're not the ones like fully executing on it, that's really where they are. And I would definitely say that this is in the kind of performance space, right? There's also on brand side can be brand marketing teams, I would say that your creative strategist most likely will be on more of the advertising side versus the brand marketing side. But if you really want to do it well, the creative strategist should be speaking to the brand marketing team to give them insights on what's working kind of day to day and how they could then take that and expand it to kind of broader initiatives if they needed it. Uh, the creative strategist on the agency side can look pretty different than on the brand side. You know, specifically for us, where we are shooting the content in person, the creative strategist is the one that's directing the shoot itself. So we get talent. We don't work with creators right now. And so what we do is we get the talent. We have a videographer and it's the actual strategist who's, you know, saying, hey, videographer, this is the shots that we uh, that I want to see talking to the talent, making sure we get the voiceover. They're kind of not only planning the ideas, but they're also kind of directing everything when it comes to the actual production itself. There are other agencies where they work with only creators. And so it's kind of like 
the strategist is talking to the brand, then they come up with the ideas, build the briefs, and then they go to creators and they go and create that content. And maybe they're giving the creators feedback depending on what the deliverables are and then bringing it to the client themselves. I would also say that like beyond getting net new content, it's also the job of the creative strategist to be looking at the performance of ads and then coming up with iterations or new ideas or kind of smaller iterations of ideas. And I've talked a little bit about like kind of testing methodology in previous episodes. So you can kind of go back on those on, on like the levels of like the different types of tests, but they are the ones that should be in charge of kind of figuring out what test the brand should be doing and, and making sure that that gets done and executed. Now, as I've mentioned in the, earlier, which is this is not a degree, right? Like no university is talking about Facebook ad data, unfortunately. And I think they're doing, I think they're doing people a disservice by not really having the updated kind of advertising that most brands and most companies are using, which is social media and social media advertising. They're not teaching these things. And so what's difficult is you know, unless you have a very experienced marketer who has, you know, cut their teeth in direction consumer advertising, and maybe they've decided they really want to go into creative strategy, one, they're going to be very expensive because they're going to have a lot more experience. They're going to be a lot more senior. But then two, you, there's not many people that have like, who are in that like junior space, right? And so that makes it really difficult because it's kind of like, we need more people but there's really no development. It's like, unless you had started in marketing in the last five years, you're not going to learn it. So you're not going to know to like search for that position. You're not going to really know to get that position. And you're not going to have the experience or knowledge to get a position like that, right? And so it creates this weird dynamic in the hiring kind of pool of talent. And so you either have over experience or not over experience, but senior level type creative strategy, or you have like very, very junior. And there's really no kind of like middle ground there. And I think that's really kind of difficult. Um, and so what happens is, is if a brand needed a creative strategist and they can't pay that senior person, they're like, crap, we need to go with something more junior, which is totally fine. But then there's a huge like onboarding and training process that needs to happen. And without the right infrastructure already in place, that might not be kind of the best kind of case scenario. And so my hope is that we can produce resources like this podcast, content online to help people train up the next kind of generation of creative strategists, this new kind of space within advertisement that hasn't existed kind of prior to the last like five years really. But for me, I know that we are hiring here at Goodo and I am trying to find, you know, creative strategists, people that I can work with. And I wanted to kind of break down how I am going after acquiring talent, because I think this could be really, really helpful. I definitely have the advantage of knowing a lot and having confidence that I can train people up. I feel like it's a lot harder if you don't, if you like need the position because you're not the right person to do that, right? So if you're a founder of a brand and you're like, I'm not good at creative, I need creative, a creative strategist, you kind of need somebody who's already done it, right? Because if you're not good at creative, you can't teach that person about creative, right? So that's the difficult part. Whereas for me, I could get somebody a little bit more junior, somebody out of college, because I know that I can train them up because this is the thing that I do, right? I actually create this podcast literally for internal training. I just happen to be publishing it out into the world. That being said, there's a ton of people who will apply to a position like this. And what I am really looking for is a desire to create. I know that most people are not going to be keyed in on data, Facebook data, creative data, what it means for creative. I know that they probably don't know a ton about like everything that has to do with Ogilvy or direct response writing or this or that. But because 
technology. We all have our phones. We all have cameras. We all have the basic availability to create content and edit videos for free. Like literally TikTok's free. You can shoot everything in that app and edit everything in that app. You don't have to be the most incredible videographer or editor or anything like that to create content. You don't have like there's the barrier to entry to create is zero is literally zero at this point. So what I'm looking for is, do you have the desire to create? Because I can teach everything else. Like I can teach the data stuff. I can teach you, you know, what is direct response marketing. I buy the books. I incentivize people reading those books. I have a ton of internal content to teach people. I'm constantly putting them on projects, trying to teach them. The learning part is easier. The teaching part is very easy. The thing that I cannot teach is your desire to want to create. And what I'm really looking for is not only just like that desire, but just has like an interesting eye. Like if they are creating content, I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So yeah, I do look them up on Instagram. I do look them up on TikTok. I'm looking for their portfolio. Do they have a .com, like name.com? I want to see that stuff. And those are the people that are getting the conversations with us is not like, oh, they like had some internship at so-and-so or they've worked at blah, 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 or they went to this school. I don't care about any of that stuff. What I want to know is, do they have an eye? Because you can always train around that eye, right? But do they have taste, right? And you can always teach them everything else, but it's very hard to train that. And they've got to want it for themselves. they got to want to try it themselves. Also, if they do want to do that on their own, then that means that they're going to be willing to learn everything else, okay? Both my creative strategists right now, one I found on TikTok. I literally recruited off of TikTok because she was making skincare videos in her dorm room. And I was like, she didn't have to be doing that. She didn't have a following. She wasn't an influencer or anything like that. She just genuinely wanted to do that. We started working on our project, and then eventually when she graduated, hired her full-time, right? And she's done a ton. She's worked here for a year. The other one, same thing. She has her own Instagram page. She's constantly creating content, was doing that before she applied to work here. But I could teach everything else in terms of ads, all that stuff. But the fact that they both wanted to create, they were creating actively, is everything. It was a lot easier to teach them because they wanted to do this already. But also I could see the work. I could see that they understood what content is and how it looks great, right? Like they weren't making ads necessarily, but you could see that they, they understood how video would be created, right? They understood content in the 21st century. In 2024, they could understand those things. And I don't think you need much more than really just that. And so that's really how I am going about hiring. That's the things that I'm looking at. I think if you have the confidence to train and grow somebody, then that is like awesome. Like you should totally go that route. If you don't have the time or the ability or maybe even the knowledge to do that, I think that you can still see somebody and if they have a creative talent from their portfolio, you just know it, right? If their stuff is engaging, it's great. And then you can, there's plenty of other resources, courses and things that you could, and just free content like out there on the internet, like DC Twitter, all that stuff, like YouTube, like there's a bunch of stuff where you could at least, even if you are not the teacher, you could send them to the right places to do it. But if you do that, you just have to make sure you have some grace in terms of their up, their speed of, of you know, kind of coming up to speed in that role. The other option is to go more with experience, but you have to look for two things. One is they might have the quote unquote experience, but have they actually done that work, right? Did they lead a team of, of other people to do the work? Or were they actually cutting their teeth writing copy? So if they have experience, make sure that they can actually do the work, actually write copy, know how to do a great brief, can understand creating content, 
video editing, et cetera. They don't have to be the best at it, but they got to know how to do those things. And then making sure that like they, because they have experience, what are like, what's the performance, understanding their decision-making, those types of things. What I'm going to be doing is after doing some screening calls, I'm going to be doing a test and it's just going to be, Hey, do this test. I want to see, like make a brief for this brand, you know, do the research, come up with a video idea and, you know, send it to me. I want to know how they come up with the ideas. I want to understand, you know, what, what it is, what's, what are they looking for? And honestly, like, especially on the junior side, it's like, are they going to be the best creative, uh, you know, direct response copy like David Ogilvy? Probably not. But I just want to see how do they see this problem that they're trying to solve. And then in the interview, after that, I'm going to just talk to them about it. Tell me about your process. How did you think about this? What did you do? And it's just to understand their creative decision making. And that's what's cool about this podcast is it's just me talking about creative decision making, right? That's that's everything. And that's something you can develop and grow. But there's also kind of this like, if somebody's got it, they've got this like taste to it. Like they can just, they can, you'll just know. Like I think you can understand like, hey, how people are thinking about it. You can always grow and learn and expand to make it more data analytical and all that stuff. But I think that, you want to just really be looking at the visuals, their ideas. And the creative strategist is really at the end of the day, coming up with ideas and just coming up with fresh ideas. And you want to make sure that the people you're hiring are people that aren't just going to kind of just template everything and just kind of copy and paste, but really help you break through with new narratives, new storylines, new visuals, uh, new ways to communicate your product. That is their job. And you got to let them do that. You got to let them fail. You got to let them come up with those ideas and learn. And this is a new role. It's a new position that's really developing in our space. But I think, you know, more and more, you're going to see more strategists, creative strategists, brand side, not just in agencies, but I think you're going to see like that as brands really need to expand their content. I think content needs are only going to get bigger as the years go on. There's going to be more places to consume. There's just going to be more content that's needed. And we need more kind of creative slash analytical kind of combined thinkers in the work, work environment, whether that's agency, brand, doesn't matter. And we're going to need to develop this process and this position more. And I think we're just seeing that. I hope that this was helpful in terms of defining what that role looks like, because I think a lot of brands always have this like weird vibe of like, I need this. I need somebody that can just help me with coming up with ideas and also helping me execute those ideas and like thinking about it. And it's like, yeah, that's a creative strategist. That's what the role is. And that's how you would hire for it. And this is just how I'm hiring for it. I've done I've recruited out, you know, via TikTok. And I think that's a great way. If you find people's content, you're like, hey, I love your content. I want you to come, you know, check us out and like see if you want to work with us. Cool. That's one way of doing it. I've done it. You can also just put out that job description and be looking for portfolios and things like that. There's going to be plenty of people who say they want to do social media. There's plenty of people who say they're passionate about doing these things. But if you cannot, see any work that they've ever done you don't see if they've ever created one video to me they're not passionate actions speak louder than words that's what i'm looking for you can always train up these people and i think you should be very aware that most likely there's going to be a lot more training than other roles just because the education lacks like just completely in the universities and so they're really not prepared to take on a role like this so you got to see, are they willing to learn and do they have a, like a just desire to create? If you can have those two things and they're a great fit for you culturally and you feel confident that you can hire and, and grow that person, then that's how you would hire. If not, look for maybe somebody more experienced to then kind of build that infrastructure internally before you maybe hire somebody junior and then that person can go and train them and hire them. So 
That's today's episode. It's about who is a creative strategist, how do you hire them, what does it look like, agency, brand side, all that fun stuff. I think it's important for us to break down the positions, not just how things are you know, being made in like the behind the scenes of ads. That's awesome. It's really exciting. But when you think about it, actually understanding who is behind all of these ads and how do you have those people and find those people is just as important in terms of unlocking performance. The people, your team is everything when it comes to performance and you need to find the right people. And this is a position that's very needed and will continue to grow in terms of need. And this is how I am seeing it right now and seeing how to hire this role right now. Let me know if you have any other questions. This was a fun episode and that's it. All right, bye-bye, peace.